Welcome back to Tales of Chemistry. Let us discuss some, um, you know, fill in the blanks and MCQ type questions from solutions. So I've given the options here. The question begins from here. The dash pressure of an aqueous solution of cane sugar is dash than that of pure water. Now, the dash pressure, it has to be vapor pressure, right? So, the vapor pressure of an aqueous solution of cane sugar. So, this is a solution. Solutions of vapor pressure, okay, is it greater than or lesser than the uh, <clears throat> solvent's vapor pressure? So, we have studied that when you add a solute into a solvent, the vapor pressure decreases. That is why the boiling point increases. Question number two. Solutions which obey, which strictly obey dash law, Raoul's law, right? That option is given Raoul's law are called ideal solutions. Solutions which strictly obey Raoul's law are called ideal solutions. Now, again, these are all board questions. That's why that repetition that you are seeing. Ideal solutions obey dash law. Once again, Raoul's law. And they dash form azeotropic mixture. Do they form azeotropic mixture or they do not form? Ideal solutions do not form azeotropic mixture. Non-ideal solutions are forming azeotropic mixture. Now, <clears throat> the elevation and boiling point of 0 0.5 molar K2SO4 solution is dash than that of urea. Okay, so what is the difference? See, the concentration is the same, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in both cases. But K2SO4 is a salt which will undergo dissociation and it will produce three ions. Urea is a, uh, you know, Solute which will not undergo any association or dissociation. So there is no change in so, uh, urea. All right. Which means elevation and boiling point with respect to this 0.5 molar K2SO4 has to be greater because it has more number of particles. Elevation and boiling point is a colligative property. Colligative property depends on the number of particles. So here it is more than elevation and boiling point of 0.5 molar K2SO4 solution is more than that of same concentrated urea solution. Elevation and boiling point of KCl, again concentration is the same. KCl, KCl has less number of particles. KCl will give you two particles. K2SO4 will give you three particles. So for KCl, the elevation and boiling point will be less than that of potassium sulfate solution. The last part, Van Hoff factor of acetic acid solution is dash than 1. Okay, so obviously greater than 1 or less than 1 is to be written. Uh, and normal colligative property is dash than the observed colligative property of this solution. So Van Hoff factor, since it is acetic acid, right? Acetic acid, we already know that it undergoes dimerization, which means 
I is equal to one by two. Yeah, two moles are two molecules exist together. Two moles exist together. Now they are asking the relation between I and colligative property. I is equal to observed colligative property by the theoretical or normal colligator property normal colligator property okay so here one by two we have got that is i value we know i is equal to one by two now let's read the question again and try figure out the uh, answer now van hoff factor of acetic acid solution is dash than one it is one by two so it has to be less than one okay and the value of normal colligative property okay value of normal colligative property has to be greater sorry has to be dash than observed so uh, 1 by 2 is the value of i and that is the ratio between observed and normal colligative property, right? That's the ratio between observed and normal. Therefore, here normal colligative property is more. The denominator has to be more. Answer is 1 by 2. So, normal colligative property has to be greater than or more than the observed colligator property. Normal has to be more than the observed colligator property. These are the questions that you can expect, yeah? uh, especially when this uh, higher order thinking questions are involved. The last fill in the blanks type of question that uh, that has to be our focus. Now, MCQs for a dissociated solute in solution, the value of Van Hoff factor, okay, for a dissociated solute like uh, our NaCl. One NaCl will give you two particles. Then the value of Van Hoff factor, any example like this, if you consider here Van Hoff factor is two, here Van Hoff factor is three. So easily you can figure out that for a dissociated solute in solution, the value of Van Hoff factor is greater than one. Question number two, the molecular weight of MACL is determined by measuring osmotic pressure of its aqueous, uh, aqueous solution is the molecular weight of MACL determined by measuring the osmotic pressure of its aqueous solution. Okay, so once again here, uh, you know, since they have told it is NaCl, we know I is equal to two, right? And it is a relation between the molecular mass. So I is equal to normal, I'll just write mm for molecular mass, normal molecular mass by observed or experimental molecular mass. Normal is theoretical. So I know I is equal to 2. And uh, for NaCl, the normal molecular mass is 58.5 by observed molecular mass. So observed molecular mass has to be 58.5 by 2. Yeah. So, whatever is the answer, let us just look at the options. What does that option say? Um, double the theoretical value, same as the theoretical value, half the theoretical value, three times the theoretical value. So, here the answer is half the theoretical value. Okay. So, I applied the formula. That's all what I have done. 
Fine. Now, <clears throat> next question is out of the three, okay, out of the, sorry, out of the following, the one having the highest boiling point. So, all our salts, all of them will be dissociated. So, adjacent to it, I'll write the I value. I or at least mentally, here you will have a 2. Here you will have a I is equal to 3. Here you will have I is equal to K plus and NO3 minus O2 again. Here you have 4K plus and 1, the complex ion, so totally 5 ions, 4 simple ions, 4K plus ions and 1 FeCN6, 4 minus ion. Okay, so out of the following, the one having the highest boiling point has to be the one with so many particles. Okay, so uh, option D is the correct answer just because the number of particles are more in D. Next question, solution containing components A and B follows Raoul's law with reference to the statement which of the following is correct. Uh, since it obeys Raoul's law, AB attraction is greater than AA and BB? No. AB attraction is less than AABB? No, because it is Raoul's law. AB attraction remains the same as AA and BB attraction. There is no change in force of attraction. There is no change in volume. The last statement is volume is different from the sum of volume of both components. So that is also wrong. Correct option is option C. Now, AB undergoes dimerization in benzene. Even all of these are the previous board questions itself. Okay. AB undergoes dimerization um, and Van Hoff factor is found to be 0.6. So I is equal to 0 0.6 and it undergoes dimerization. Okay. So dimerization meaning N is equal to 2. Find the degree of dissociation. So you have to remember the formula which I have given in the last video. Alpha is equal to N into 1 minus I by N minus 1. Dimerization N is equal to 2. N 2, my, 2 into 1 minus 0 0.6 by 2 minus 1. So that is 0 0.8. So when you express in percentage, this is 80 percent, 0 0.8 into 100. So this is 80 percent. So is such an answer given? Yes, option C once again is 80 percent. Okay, so all of these are once again all old questions, previous questions itself. Now, assertion reason question was introduced from 2021 in our syllabus. So you will not find many previous questions under assertion reason. I'm giving you about five questions with explaining what this assertion reason is. Now, there are two statements which are given to you. I have mentioned one as A, the other one R. A for assertion, B for reason. So, you will have to read the statements. So, let's read the first statement. Sum of mole fraction of all components in the solution is greater than 1. When reading, you understood that this is a wrong statement because sum of mole fraction of all components in a solution is equal to 1. 
So the assertion statement is wrong. Mole fraction is independent of temperature. That is true. Now come back to this. Both assertion and reason are true. Is it so? No, assertion was false. Both assertion and reason are true. No, assertion is false. Assertion is true. Again, not option C. Assertion is false, but reason is true. So here your answer is a D. Okay, so for First question, your answer happens to be B, that is assertion is false, but reason is correct. Second one, delta H and delta V are greater than zero for non-ideal solution. Um, looks like a false statement because delta H and delta V mixing can be less than zero also for non-ideal solution. Anyway, let me read the second part. The interactions between particles of the components are different from that of particles in the liquid. So this is again D because assertion is false, but the reason given is, I mean, reason as a statement the reason is a correct statement. Next, osmosis is the movement of solvent, okay, from lower solute concentration, lower solute concentration meaning dilute solution, correct, to higher solute concentration. So from Solvents are moving from the, uh, you know, dilute solution to the concentrated solution. Okay, that is correct. Solutions having same osmotic pressure are called isotonic solution. So this as a statement is correct. Reason as a statement is correct. But is reason a correct explanation for osmosis? They are just telling if you have two solutions, uh, and uh, both have the, uh, you know, same osmotic pressure, you can call them isotonic solution. Yeah, they could have also written at the same temperature, but anyway. Now, go back to the options which are given to you. Yeah, both A and R are true. Correct. And R is the correct explanation for the uh, assertion. Is reason the correct explanation for assertion here? No. Okay. But uh, look at B. Uh, when you look at B, A and R are true, which is correct. But R is not the correct uh, explanation. So for this, the answer becomes B. Though the statements are correct, okay, reason is not a correct explanation for assertion. Next one, isotonic solutions do not show osmosis. Isotonic solutions do not show osmosis. Which is true because, you know, they have the same concentration. Then how will the solvent flow from, uh, you know, solvents a higher concentration to lower concentration? Right. So uh, isotonic solutions do not show osmosis as correct. Isotonic solutions have the same concentration. So that also happens to be correct. Now, this will be A. That is both assertion and reason are correct and reason is the correct explanation for assertion. So this happens to be A. Last question. Reverse osmosis is used in desalination of water. I have given you this example uh, in uh, one of the previous videos based on osmosis. Reverse osmosis is used in desalination of water. Okay, then uh, reason. 
when pressure more than osmotic pressure is applied, pure water is squeezed out of seawater through the membrane, through the semi-permeable membrane. Okay, so, you know, read that once again. Reverse osmosis is used in desalination, that is correct. And is the reason a correct explanation? We are telling that when pressure more than osmotic pressure is applied, that is when reverse osmosis takes place. Pure water is squeezed out from seawater through the semi-permeable membrane. So this is also option A. That is both assertion and reason are correct statements. And reason is a correct explanation for assertion. So that's all in this video. Please stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.